Ha ha, it works! <laughs> you have no idea how long it took me to find... to find that stupid transition again, because it was buried under a bunch of other stuff. All right, hello, and welcome to some sort of talk show. I am once again joined by Even Star Long. Hello, Even. Hi. This episode, we discuss the phrase, art imitates life, or the flip side and why I bring this conversation to the table Life imitates art, and that it bothers me, but I cannot identify why it bothers me. Hopefully, we uncover how this phrase came to be and why it bothers me, or maybe I can understand it enough to not be so bothered. I speak to you from the future because I flubbed the audio. In the first half, we define and lay out the phrase we are more familiar with, art imitating life, to the extent that catching a ball effectively and consistently could be an art. One person could be inspired by another's talent to perform this and leads them to practice until they too can perform the art of catch. In this example, there's this thing that exists in life and one and someone else wishes to imitate that. Once the error was caught and corrected in the audio, we finally catch up and join the conversation. A man using art to imitate life to make money off current events, and then even slides in a new factor to the conversation, intent. Uh porcelain china things and he made it of like world war ii era guns and knives and hand grenades and everyone thought i mean i thought it was cool but people that liked it so many people liked it because it was this like weird mismatch of like these articles of war and then these like i don't know they look like grandma collectibles in a way <laughs> uh and there's like fragility of the, like the uh, porcelain, yet this like high refined culture that's being used to make these again articles of war. But, um, but if you look through his work, some of his work it, like is about like Hitler and stuff and Nazis because of like it being World War Two, and people see it as this like kitsch uh, kind of um, ironic things. Uh, but when you look at some of his statements. Um, he actually is like a, a neo-Nazi. He <laughs> likes Hitler. He is making these stuff, so much of this stuff to like honor Hitler and Nazis. Like, did he fail what he was doing in making beautiful Hitler stuff to make people enjoy and appreciate Nazis? Yeah, fuck yeah, he did. Did he succeed in become uh, like making a bunch of money at selling these things that people thought were like kitsch, interesting, silly things? Hell yeah, he did. Oh, I don't know. I think there's always that split. And was he, I don't know. In his case, he was kind of cool with it because then it was like, haha, all you people that hate Hitler are paying me to make art about Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh. yeah, I think when it comes, um, intent, yeah, intent is a really weird I think in any sort of um, creation method intent is a very weird area to try to you know put a finger on as like that secondary even tertiary person looking at this thing when you're not the primary you know creative um, it always seems it it's weird how it's weird trying to think that the the creator is like I'm going to make I'm going to I'm going to create this piece with this intent when really I feel that the intent is mostly up to the to the to everyone else to kind of decide for themselves. It's it was always weird to me like for instance when um we were reading books in middle school and stuff it was always weird to me to have the teacher come and tell us 
Oh, so, you know, and did you all know that the the light that was depicted in the background was a was a um was a represent was a representation of this like this concept and we were all just like what are you talking about? It was just a light in the distance. <laughs> Come on, lady. <laughs> Figure it out. Um <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's true. But I don't know. There is that part of we, and it is kind of weird, trying to teach people to speak the language of of, uh, of art or, uh, you know, poetic writing and symbolism, uh, trying to figure out what, what these uh, artists and writers are trying to say, Use, uh, meeting them on their ground instead of them meeting you on your ground. But it's a back and forth. Like they, like, uh, like if you imagine throwing a ball, like if you had, you know, a, you know, class A, like pro football player throw a, uh, a ball to a person, their ability to throw that fucking ball is amazing. They could get it right to, to your chest, so you can like grab it with your arms. But if you really don't t t tell people to like do the like clutch things to your chest and they try to do the like I'm gonna put my hands out and just stop it like with my hands like or I'm gonna grab it with one hand you know it doesn't matter how good that football player is at throwing the ball to them uh, but at the same time if a football player uh, or if you just take you know that person that goes to kick a football and they hold it sideways like uh, and just like I don't know Kick it, kick it where it only hits the tip and it spirals off left, and then they're pissed that nobody fucking catches the ball. It's like, no, you just fucking suck it uh, at it's like at you know kicking the ball to us. Uh, so when we comes down to art, I think some people don't appreciate that. Like, um, one part is your ability to mimic life, to understand life to package it in such a way that it says the message that you want to the best to your audience. But on the same time, it's up to the audience to be able to, to understand and to take the time and to take the necessary measures to start peeling that apart using the, that language. Like, if you knew, I don't know. All right, I can, I can leave it there. <laughs> well, on a high horse and stuff but like it's a, it's a back and forth you both have to be a little bit educated on how to do stuff yeah um so hopefully that was a, an extended and <clears throat> um roundabout way of the history of the original or not i don't know if it's the original necessarily but um that's yeah. the but that's the that's the philosophy that I that makes sense to me. That's you know the um, hmm. art imitating art life. Imitating. Yeah, it, it it makes sense to me by you know just in its almost by its self definition. Like it's it just yeah that that sounds logical to me. Um, you know because before it just to me you know it it just uh, the way it makes sense to me is that like. There had to have been things that existed before people started creating what was declared art, right? So it's you know, I hate using this 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 um, this phrase nowadays because people always point out, oh, but the dinosaurs, but the chicken and the egg type of the thing, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, so that that's the one that makes sense. So let's. If you're if you're relatively unfamiliar with it, then uh, this will be an ed an educational experience for the both of us. So let's delve into the opposite, where somehow life imitates art. Um, I was trying my best to kind of listen to you in one ear and just try to um, understand in my metaphorical other ear. Um, reading these other documentations on um, how life imitates art somehow. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the phrase that has popped up in, I think I heard it most recently on a television like special on like some sort of, uh, it was like some old, it was documenting how this old, um, 
like 50s film was like produced and stuff and they were like yeah you know it's 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 a it's an example of life imitating art and i'm just sit there and go how how is it imitating art if it itself is art anyways um i, I just i can't and then whenever i try to sit down and try to f like formulate an argument against it i find that i never have enough ammo to really be like to really sit there and go this is this is why I hate this phrase and I wish people would stop <laughs> using it. You know, I just don't have I don't have it. So now finally we're going to sit down, we're going to find out why this irritates me and should I really be all that irritated by it? We I you know, I I'd, I'd like to be enlightened and not be irritated by this, but if I actually get ammo to be irritated by it then I guess that's positive too maybe. <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> Um, so as you were saying that it was a um, the art imitating life is a philosophical position of the what's the what's the what's the what's the what's the adjective for it the the mi the mimickers the mimizers <laughs> um, those that follow uh, the way of mimesis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I've always known them as uh, imitationalist. So you imitate life, imitate things that exist. As a, as a slight tangent, though, that does sound a little um, not derogatory. What's it called? It's um, belittling, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll screw them. <laughs> yeah. I'm a mimicker. <laughs> it's like, oh. Okay. <laughs> um, um, sometimes. Uh, a realist is um, is kind of where some of them might want to fall. Damn it! That reminds right. me. Of, there's Photo another, realist there's another, sometimes. That reminds me that there's another like badass job out there um, that Shark also wrestling. has a really yeah. unfortunate title to it that makes it sound so much less than what the actual you know job position is. But I can't think of it right now. But um, anyways, moving on. So, life imitating <laughs> art is the um, what they describe as the anti mimesis position. Um, uh, apparently, it was so. According to this article, it was um, opined in an essay, "The Decaying the Decay of Lying," which, in and of itself, is. A telling title I think um, and that was by Oscar Wilde who I don't know if it was the first mention of it though but I'm sure that it's been you know it's been floating around but he was the first one to put it to pen and paper <laughs> um, and in there in that one it's actually stated that life Im or it's um, the the opinion is stated that life imitates art far more than art imitates life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, and like just at a at a first glance, doesn't sound right to me. It still doesn't sound right to me. But <laughs> let's let's keep going and let's see what let let's see how much more we can enlighten ourselves. Um, so I I don't know. I like it. Um, I, I, I kind of ascribe to that sort of thought. I, I, I probably wouldn't talk about like life imitating art, but I think most people would ascribe to the idea of um, uh, a lot of things are about perspective. Um, hmm. And that when you look at things in one way, uh, you have, you know, uh, a you'll draw this conclusion. When you look at it in another way, you'll draw this conclusion. And so a lot of times life uh, is about, uh, when, we, when you say it's like this collection of experiences, those experiences are colored heavily by the way that that moment has been like put together. And that, I don't know, we kind of, we kind of play a part according to our experiences and according to how we've been told to react to certain scenarios. And so art oftentimes tells us about the, 
the life that we should be living or how we should respond to things. The fact that I chose blue for sad is based off of, I don't know, thousands of years of, uh, probably not thousands, but um, maybe, uh, but several hundreds of years of deciding that blue was a sad color. Um, but is it? Uh, it's sad in certain senses that people like to ascribe it to being cooler, uh, being akin to water, and water could be akin to crying, and that cooler is closer to darkness and light and cold, uh, and that those things make people sad. But in, um, uh, in the Middle East, blue is a, a very... It's a happy, holy color because it means sky. It means water. It means those things that bring life of like God being sky. So blue being seen as a sad color might not be true there. <laughs> That's cultural aspect is always an interesting um, factor to, you know, pop into a, um, to an aesthetic. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I lost my I lost my I lost my words there halfway through. Um, so there's uh, one I guess more. Here's a question. Oh, sorry. sorry. There's there's one more quote before I want to jump over to another um, or to a uh, to the actual summary of the decay of lying or yeah the decay of lying, and it's one that's going to be brought up again. But this is the one that's interested in, or interested me the most while I was reading through this, which is um, poets and painters have taught have taught the loveliness of such effects. They did not exist till art had invented them. And mm -hmm. it's highlighted again in the summary of The Decay of Lying, in which the first bullet point in the summary is art never expresses anything but itself. And I think that's an interesting thing. But to me, it all sounds like... Um, it sounds very similar to the concept of if someone maybe five years from now were to come out with something that was very similar to um, like a Walkman or a tape deck or something, you know, and say, hey, look, this thing is new where, you know, everyone sort of just kind of forgot that it had already existed. And it was the reason that the CD player, the DVD player, and then eventually, you know, all these Blu-rays and you know thumb drives and things exist and now mm -hmm. it's come out again but people just kind of forgot that you know it, it it sounds very similar to me in which people kind of forget that oh you know there was this lake there was a person that thought a very um solemn thought at this lake and decided to somehow immortalize that and carry it around with him and then share it to other people and then you know as the time went on then suddenly people were like oh so you know this whole concept of you know art never expresses anything but itself just kind of came up from that hmm. uh, i wish there was a shorter way for me to describe that but uh i can't right now <laughs> <laughs> but that but does that make sense or do i need to try do i need a, a second try <laughs> I'm curious at what what you have what you're frustrated about. <laughs> well, okay, so initially, what so this the the art imitates life thing. No, life imitates art thing is weird to me. Um, uh, let me see. Okay, it's weird to me because. I feel like a third grader writing like an essay or something. I just <laughs> okay. Um, it it's weird to me because uh, it initially it feels like it doesn't make sense, you know? Because uh, I feel like it's easy for this to not make sense to me if the first one made made so much sense. I feel. Mm -hmm. um, if you know i don't well let's take this walkman kind of thing uh, uh example uh and we'll kind of like peel this apart okay um the walkman is a thing that existed it is life it is a historical fact that that existed and therefore you know things can be made from there it is like um uh whereas 
when you're trying to when you said like it's kind of frustrating if like people forget about it and then somebody comes forward and said hey i made this it's new uh like historically like no it has already it's already been made a part of life it existed right right so it's kind of frustrating saying that like i don't know that uh, that well, art the, only the more... reference itself that it has its right to exist on its own and just to say I exist. Yeah, I mean the, the, the more the more I the more I try the more I try to um, relate it back to art, like art literally, um, my analogy gets more complicated in my head, <laughs> and <laughs> and I, I slowly wish I hadn't I hadn't said it that way, but. Um, let me let me attempt to describe it again. So right, so we have the Walkman, right, and it existed, and then someone looked at that Walkman and said, um, "That's interesting," and their version of the art would be the CD drive, right? So they said, "I can, I can." That that Walkman inspired me to make it, but it's a flatter version of this of this thing mm -hmm. and then from there other people looked at that and said wow that's a really inspiring thing and then their art of that <sighs> uh okay i think i'm doing an okay job <laughs> let me see <laughs> so um but then it sound but then so then this sound sounds like to me art never expresses anything but itself um what was the other one they did not exist till art had invented them damn <laughs> i'm describing exactly what this thing is saying but um well it, it hurts my head so thinking about the word art, like if we, if we look at this, it comes from artifice, it comes from artifact, it comes from um, uh, from those key things, meaning uh, an artifice, an artifact, I mean, it's like something that a human has made. Okay. So, so okay. So the word art, uh, when we, when, when, in looking at art, never expresses anything uh, besides itself, and that these, this language of art didn't exist until we invented the language of art. Uh, it's challenging that fact that there is somehow a realm of thought that exists uh, of human thought that existed before humans thought. And we could get into a, another philosophical debate if there's something more than humans, but I'm going to say right now, there's just humans. Simple. Um, <laughs> since we're talking about human art and we're not talking about shit that penguins have made, I mean, like, oh, man. <laughs> uh, and that nothing has come forward and, like, hey, I've made some fucking art um, yet. I don't know, at least in this scenario. Uh, so with, with that in mind, the, the ways that we make stuff, the ways that we fool the eye, uh, the trends that we set, and the ways that we learn how to break apart what that trend means uh, or what those symbols mean have all been invented. They've been codified. They, have, uh, they are artifice. They are human-made. And so art, um, uh, making art is looking and using those terms, those techniques of art, those inventions of art and uh, the inventions of symbolism and how we interpret those uh, to then make new ways, uh, ways of expressing those. Where it gets kind of weird, and I, I feel like where you're frustrated, but maybe not, is where it's, uh, where the, the assumption is made that our creation of the world that we live in or our perception of the world that we live in um, through the things that we make is somehow more real than what already exists and that we respond to what we are making what we are feeling what we are told to feel more than what actually is there mm. okay. you know? um, well Let's okay. So let's give this a try. So let's throw out all all of my previous jibber jabber, 
Chibba I'm just going to I'm just going to walk you down my my mental path of how, how right. I originally became frustrated with this. So I heard I hear the phrase um, life imitates art and I say, OK, let's 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 throw an example or let's let's walk down a mental example. Right. So I start with something. So I start with something that exists. Right. So let's take let's take a tree or a lake. Um, I guess a tree is more simple. So let's take a tree, right? Um, tree existed. It's always going to kind of exist. It, there's nothing really that's going to really mess with it. Human comes along and says, wow, look at this tree. I'm going to draw a picture of it and I'm going to take it back to wherever and I'm going to show it off to places, right? So just in that, just in that um, interaction there, it's hard for me to see how life imitates art when the tree, when the tree was there first in order for the human to be inspired to want to copy it down and then show it off to other people, whereas the 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 phrasing when when i hear that phrase it makes me think that it like the human had to have wanted to f find a tree went out and somehow found like the perfect tree to copy down and brought that back maybe i mean my 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 um my my example, my mental pathway, it ends at, you know, it ends at the human bringing the tree, the picture of the tree back to the village or the wherever, you know, the academy. <laughs> okay. Well, so, but, you know, but we'll I just kind of continued on. Yeah, but I just kind of When we were talking on. about, um, uh, I guess, um, uh, uh, I forgot the person's name, but the person, uh, like in the statement, I was saying that it is uh, that art um, or life imitates art more oh, often than Oscar, um, Oscar Wilde Oscar Wilde um, more often than art imitates life and in that scenario yes uh, there is a there's a tree person found a tree felt a certain way about the tree made the uh, made a painting of the tree and showed it to people at the Academy or village or whatever so, uh, but that is, uh, that is that part where he said, you know, it's more, uh, where they're starting to get into more often. Um, yes, some uh, life inspired art for a second. Um, but what inspired this person uh, is in one part, is it really the tree or is it this person's experience with the tree? Is it his perception with the tree? And then when he comes back and shows this painting to these people and says, look, I made a tree, are they, do they really look at that? Uh, like, uh, oftentimes it's like, so what? You made a tree. And then the person teaches them, well, look at how closely I matched all the detail. So this is a representation of my skill to represent this. And like, oh, yeah, that must have taken a long time. I can't draw sh trees for shit. So they just taught them the value of human interaction, human artifice in making. Or, in another scenario, and, oh, well, they say, well, that took you a long time, but it's still just a tree. And they go, really, though? Because, look, I changed the background uh, in this whole thing. I made it look like a stormy day. Doesn't it look... It looks kind of moody. The way that the tree is bending over and the leaves are falling off, it kind of is talking about, you know, the endurance of nature versus... Uh, you know, bigger events in life. And they go, oh yeah, I can kind of see what you're talking about there. Again, this is a representation of how the human artifice is making things. And then when somebody else uh, kind of gets those, and they're going to like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to make, I'm going to make a, you know, a, uh, another scene. Uh, we're going to set up a story, and I'm going to I'm going to paint this picture in people's mind and I'm going to describe this stormy uh day and usually uh they're they're not referencing 
a physical, actual stormy day. What they're referencing is that, that painting that they saw from that other person, that story they heard from someone else. And when, uh, when they paint that picture, or when they write about that to make this, set this sad scene, somebody reads that and they're like, oh man, that's amazing. I really, I feel that. What they're feeling is they're feeling that painting, uh, they're feeling those words, which are about that painting, which are about how that guy felt about that tree. And then it goes on to someone else that watches that movie that has this scene in it. And they experience that. And then when they go outside the next day and like it's starting to get kind of gray out, they start feeling a little bit sad. And they start, uh, because they're associating the imagery, the ideas, the, the symbolism, that have been put together, crafted by all these other people to say, stormy clouds, weathered tree, equals sad. Hmm. We kind of, I think art has such a strong power to manipulate how we perceive things, what things we see as important, what things we, what trends we start to follow. Uh, and it's based off of these human interactions between art making art, art referencing art, art reference, uh, and if one way to look at it, art references uh, artifice, references humans. Humans personify and anthropomorphize so many things, and that matters so much more than the tree itself. When you look at a at an animal and you think, like, oh, that animal is dangerous. What made you think that it was dangerous? Are spiders dangerous? Not really. They're small as fuck. They're scared <laughs> as hell. <laughs> like 90% of all spiders can't do shit to humans. <laughs> They're so pathetic. And if we want to say, yeah, but it itches. Okay, so 70% of all spiders itch when they bite you. That's the best you can do that's a good enough reason to scream and not want to like touch it to bomb your entire house so you don't itch sometimes like no it's about the artifice it's about the uh, all the things people have made using s spiders as some terrible villain as a symbol of terrible and evil and ugly and disgusting I mean they're heroes that take care of so many other bugs that carry significantly worse diseases than spider venom <laughs> yeah i guess um with all of that uh i guess it does put it into some perspective for me at least and that's a pretty <laughs> that's a that's a pretty big uh step forward uh because it, it makes me realize that i think i think my my frustration with it is that my initial um my my initial response to any sort of phrasing that people use is I generally take it too literally. So, because I was I was just reminded that in um, of the imagery that I I sometimes get in which when I hear life imitates art, I think of Bob Ross, you know, making because he he never he never does his paintings outside of a window. Usually his backdrop is just a black you know a black mat studio oh yeah just so him he just out. yeah so he just so all of his landscapes you know it's just from something in his head right mm -hmm. I, I assume anyway and then um in order to apply this thing then that would be like to go out and get you know get a backhoe and a bunch of seeds and stuff and then you know humanly create this landscape that you know bob ross created on his on his canvas and just be like bam life imitating art right there <laughs> um and like really if you think about like landscaping landscaping is such a crazy thing uh, about art or, or like life imitating art like it's the most literal decided, form of it yeah like i mean who decided what plants are weeds 
Like that's such a wild concept. <laughs> like I, I, I don't know. I, and I can I, there are some arguments of like botanists of like uh, plants that do just you know that are invasive species that do make it very difficult if you're t- coming from a farming perspective. But ninety percent of people nowadays don't have a fucking farm. Uh, <laughs> they decide what is pretty and how their landscape should exist at their home according to you know scenes that they've seen in movies and TV. Uh, Home and Garden magazine. Oh my God, that's <laughs> all hitting hard. Yeah. All right. Uh, wow. You know, I'm surprised that you were so quick to latch on to the um, metaphorical and the ph- philosophical versions of this, whereas um, <laughs> only, only now are we actually kind of touching on the more literal aspects of life imitating art and i feel like oddly enough the li- it was the literal aspect that was bugging me the most <laughs> but mm. yet there it is you know lands uh landscaping in and of itself is a perfect um example to prove to me that it it uh, it actually does kind of it actually does kind of exist <laughs> it it is a it is a facet that isn't really false at all <laughs> Mm-hmm. It can be argued. Think- it can be argued, but it's not. It's not inherently false. So I feel like my irritation of it has been has been uh, has alleviated <laughs> some. That's good. Wow. <laughs> I think sometimes uh, I think what's frustrating sometimes for a lot of people is that they're not willing to 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 be okay <laughs> with, with like. Uh, some of the like okay I can see where you're coming from <laughs> like we don't have to fully agree on it well and I think that's kind of nice I think it's it's a byproduct of a bachelor's in journalism I feel like you can't be a stick in the mud when you go into when you attempt to try to go into that field of work mm-hmm. um, I think of like life imitating art it's a nice place for for a lot of artists i think uh because you just feel like you're powerful (laughs) (laughs) um but i think something that always has like i've thought about and maybe it's from like playing video games for so long in my life and taking those like dumb online quizzes of like what's uh uh, what does your zodiac sign say about you, or <laughs> what kind of magical witch are you? But um, somewhere I got like kind of obsessed with the idea of if my life was a story, or not my life, but like if life was a story and I was a character in that storybook, what is my character? Who am I? Who have I been playing to? And I think maybe it it, it came. I came up at some point of like, uh, I think it was like when I was younger and I still liked anime. And I was like looking at the characters and thinking about how I draw myself as a character. And it's like, I never wanted to be the hero. I hate that guy. That guy doesn't know anything. And they scream so much. Uh, (laughs) And like, they actually suck. I don't ever want to be the hero. The hero is never good at anything. They are just granted good, like, the power of good at some point or they get better at something and I can appreciate that but I didn't want to be the guy that's getting better I wanted to be the guy that's good my character like who I wanted to be is I wanted to be that side character the um like if you take the the five man uh band sort of scenario do you know about that yeah not it's okay. Not, it doesn't well, sound familiar right off the bat. I'm pretty sure I've come across it once or twice, but not prevalent in my mind. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a writing system of like how do you ca- create a couple of characters to exist for a story. Um, but like the character that I always liked, like if we're taking the anime uh, standpoint, he's that that one guy that usually doesn't make eye contact with people that has the glasses that pushes them up but knows all the secrets of things and uh, he only attacks you with 10% power <laughs> <laughs> like uh, like, and that was at that time in like high school uh, that guy I thought was cool 
I wanted to be that guy. And I remember dressing, uh, I mean, not in like anime things, but like making decisions about my clothing, about who I was, how I responded to things, that I wasn't going to be overly surprised when shocking things happened, that I wasn't going to scream and shout when things happened, that I was going to remain calm. I was going to secretly, you know, work out and study and know things and be the person that was that cool, awesome side character where his life isn't going to shit, where he doesn't have to learn something about himself. Like, um, and I think, I think a lot of us do, I think all of us do that, that we are attracted to a certain kind of character or a certain kind of thing. The fact that anyone chooses any particular clothing style over another style is about you looking at art, letting art make some decisions for you about how you're supposed to uh, react or be or um, what kind of person you can be, and you using that as a standing point to then make your own art, to make your own life choices. Mm-hmm. And it kind of it sucks sometimes, I think, for some people to realize that you're, they're playing a part. But like to think that, you know, that we're somehow helping the world. Uh, uh, are you the person that's helping the world by recycling? Are you the person that's helping the world by buying organic? Are you the person that's helping the world be by coming into work every day and working really hard uh, so that you're supporting the economy? Are you helping the world because you voted? Those are all choices, kinds of ways to be that ultimately it's a very small aspect in the world but someone somewhere has decided has made made that a viable lifestyle and it's a it's an art choice in my mind it's a I don't it's know. not just visual things it's also actions and way of being that can also be considered art yeah and therefore others see that as as positive and they wish to imitate that therefore another another example yet again of life imitating art mm-hmm mm-hmm all right. Well, um, that has been our hour. I feel that at the very least, if we weren't educational, then I have been enlightened and we have therefore made massive progress. Um, next. So on the next episode, next session, next week, <laughs> hopefully, if you're not if you're not busy. Yeah, we'll try to busy. keep this solid. Um, We will be talking about fight scenes, so there will be a lot more. We will yet again delve into the anime segment once again, for they are chocked full of anime. Um, (laughs) And it's funny, I was like trying to think of like, what could be non-anime fight scenes that we could look at? And I was like, oh, pro wrestling. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> though the the focus that I that I would like to attempt to adhere to, uh, where's that text I sent you? Is uh, burp, 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 um, angles used, um, possible lighting situations. Though a lot of I I, I did some cursory searches um, earlier today, and a lot of a lot of things that I was finding were like. Um, uh, manga panels and mm-hmm. therefore black and white so it's a, it's kind of hard to do a lighting situation in those in those areas that's all but, about lighting well i don't know <laughs> maybe not in mangas i don't i don't read so many but you better believe that i'm going to try to shove in some cowboy bebop in there so there's going to be some there's going to be some lighting areas in there so eat um technique both the fighting within the scene but also um, the creation of the scene itself. So mm-hmm. hopefully we remain on topic and on task and we actually talk about those bullet points. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. You got to come here and we'll just have those bullet points up. Yes. But yeah. so, we... um, so if you want to hear more or if you want us to go any longer, um, drop a follow on the Twitch channel that you are currently on, hopefully, or on the YouTube channel. Um, you can also follow even on his Instagram page uh, with more art that is slightly better than what's currently on screen. <laughs> <laughs> like um, slightly. <laughs> and with slightly more context also. At his Instagram page at even Star Long. Um, do you have any closing remarks? Uh, 
take some time to look at your life. Find out what character you are in a story. Yeah, don't be so closed off to to new information. Maybe be prepared to accept. <laughs> yeah. it was... Or at least argue with somebody. Yeah, in a it's, fun yeah. Way. I feel that I feel that avoiding an argument is sometimes unhealthy for the human experience. Because mm -hmm. it it doesn't it doesn't lead to many enlightenments. Though it is a stressful process, I will say it is a very stressful process. But it can yield very positive results. And so, <laughs> and so with so, that, um, I hope y'all join us again um, next Saturday or Sunday. Uh, we'll make it official on <laughs> I'll, I'll send out a tweet that's either visible in the little panels below or you can just follow me at um, foxstar underscore f-o-x-s-t-a-r-r -R underscore and uh, see you next time laters bye <laughs>